I'm Hayley Kay for Blackpool's Grand Theatre and in this year of celebration of 125 years of the Grand, they've launched their own production company to present the theatre's first ever summer show, Around the World in 80s Days. Now I'm joined by writer and director Ian McFarlane and musical director Laurie Denman. So first of all, welcome. And who can start by telling me then a little bit about the show and the concept? Well. The idea of the show was to create a musical, a, a musical with, with a, a proper storyline, with the songs integrated, but that celebrated w what makes Blackpool Blackpool, the traditions of Blackpool, so live music and comedy and sort of weaving together um, variety and end of the pier and that sort of stuff. So taking, we knew that, that during the summer, live music always sells really well, but the idea was, because it's the, the 125th birthday, to sort of step it up and do, do a, a real musical, but still embracing all that. So you've got a very talented cast yeah. of performers. Tell us who you've got on the parts that they're playing. We have Andrew, who's playing Phil Fogg. In our version, Phil Fogg is a young uh, socialite playboy. Uh, we have Oliver, who is playing Passport 2, and he uh, is a French uh, ex-circus performer hmm. who travels with Phileas Fogg on his journey. And we've got uh, Justina, who's playing Aquila, and Aquila is an American archaeologist. Um, we've got a really strong, funny uh, female character that we've invented for the the, the... the character doesn't exist in the books. We've invented this new character for our version. She's a real foil for Phil Fogg. Obviously, they fall in love and they live happily ever after, but there's more of a... there's a sort of a sparring relationship okay. that goes on first, yeah. Uh, we also have Daniel, who's playing uh, Professor Gold, another character that's been created for our version. We needed a, a villain, uh, a proper um, adversary against Phil um, for the show to work. Yeah. I sleep in a ghost-proof box that Jules Verne can't get me because I've changed quite a lot of the story. <laughs> um, and we have Laurie, who is playing various characters, is also the musical director and he's arranged all the music for the show. And then we have Tina, who is playing, again, a variety of characters within this show. So how are rehearsals going then? Because like you say, lots of your cast are, are, are multi-rolling. So how's that worked? How are rehearsals going? It's intense because there are six cast members and the idea is to give it that variety, um, the idea that you've got people sort of running backwards and forwards, changing costumes and the locations change every three seconds. So it's a joy to watch because watching six people do that, the skill that goes into it, it's it's really joyous to sit in the room, it'll be joyous for the audience, but the thing is, because there are only six people and they're in everything, you can never do, two, they're one of the Blackpool seagulls right there, um, you can never do um, two things at once, so you've got, you, you can only do six people in a room, so it almost sort of halves the rehearsal time, so it means it's really, really intense, but it's, it's going really, really well. They're all very grey and sweaty, <laughs> but it's going very well. Obviously, as I am one of the cast members, mm. I, that, is, that is totally <laughs> true. Um, we are having a really good time mm. and I think, you know, we've, we've got three weeks to, to put the whole show together but ev every single cast member is really committed, really on it, really giving as much as they possibly can. So I think I think we're gonna we're gonna come out the other end. That seagull really audition, he didn't get a role, which is why he keeps interrupting. <laughs> um, the, the I mean, every director will say we've just got the most fantastic cast. They, they always say that, but in this in this case, it, it, it's it's not a lie in any way. They are just fantastic. They are so funny. Mm. We spend half our rehearsal days just laughing, laughing at other people. Yeah. So the show is being produced as part of the theatre's 125th birthday celebrations. How does it feel to be part of such a milestone moment for the theatre? Um, I think it's it's quite an honour actually um, for us to be asked and to be trusted with such a task because obviously this is the first time they've ever produced something. So to be part of the history of the theatre and technically the future as well is is really quite special. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm from Preston and I used to come to this theatre as a child and it's the first piece of work professionally that I've done in the North at all. Um, and for years I've been saying, I really, I really want to do some work near home and to, and to do this that is near home, but it's also a theatre that I used to come to. It's just, it, it's the most beautiful theatre. It really is. So it's, it's gorgeous. Ab, it, it really yeah, is it's gorgeous. gorgeous, gorgeous. And I, you know, that's not, that's not creatives going over the top and saying that. It's the most fantastic venue and all of the cast are just so excited to be here. It really is an honour. Okay, back to the story then. Mm. How does your tale differ from the original? Hmm. Well, the thing with 
Around the World in 80 Days, the original story, is that it's been, I mean, it's been adapted hundreds and hundreds of times. So my, my job at the beginning was to sort of collate all the information about all the different adaptations and all the different film adaptations, and there have been musicals as well, and plays and, uh, and cartoons and all these different ones, a TV series, uh, and, and to pick the common denominators, the, the things that are, are in every single version. And actually, people tend to know the beginning. We know that there's a man called Phileas Fogg, and he accepts a bet to go around the world in 80 days. And we know that at the end, there's a balloon in most versions, and he wins the bet. But actually, other than that, a lot of people don't really know it, so it's, it's given us uh, free reign, really, which was great, because we are obviously putting existing music into the story. So it, um, it, it differs in that we've, we've updated it, we've made it feel fresher, um, it doesn't have the, uh, the, the stereotypes that it would have had in the original story, the characters are more fleshed out, and I think it's more, um, it's more enjoyable and it's more um, fulfilling uh, as an audience member. Hopefully, I hope you tell me. So you've said all those lovely things, that it's been great, mm. but what have been your biggest challenges so far? I want to ask both of you actually, because I guess musically has a big part, music has got a huge part in this story. Yeah, I think fitting the songs into the context of the show and making sure that they don't just feel like they've been shoehorned in, you know, obviously we want the story to lead the musical, you know, otherwise, the audience won't be invested in what in what they're sing in what we're singing, um, so I think that's been the biggest challenge, and also kind of making it as interesting as possible. So we've had a lot of fun with playing around with some of the styles mm. of the music within the show um, to give an audience a bit of a surprise here and there. So you know we we might start one in the style that they know, and then it, then it changes to something else, or, or maybe we start with the style that they don't know, and they're kind of like thinking, oh, this is really interesting. So that, that's our oh. aim, so hopefully that will come across. Yeah, I would, it's the same thing for me. It's making it feel like it is a, a fully fulfilling um, piece of, of theater on one hand, but also the audience get what they want from the music. And it has to feel like the story's even the music, even though the music was, was written before I wrote this. So it was, it was a real challenge to do that. But as Laurie said, we've played around with some of the songs. We've made sure, you know, our responsibility is to make sure that if the audience are coming expecting to hear 80s songs, that they get to hear those 80s songs. Mm -hmm. But then maybe every two or three, we say, well, we'll just play around with it a little bit to give you a surprise. It might make you giggle. Yeah. Um, and it, and I think, we, well, we succeeded. And it is a true piece of musical theatre in that if you didn't know the songs, you'd still really enjoy it. That was what my aim was. So the show's been described as quite panto-esque. Is that, is that a fair comment or...? Well, we do have audience participation mm. in the show, which I think is a really important uh, part of producing a piece in Blackpool because there, there's such a history of yeah. that kind of uh, music hall interaction, um, really getting the audience invested in the show. So we have that, which is kind of a panto element. Yeah, I, I think def definitely the answer is yes. But unlike some panto, the, the characters in this piece, even though they're talking to the audience often, uh, and they break the fourth wall, they talk directly to the crowd. They are in character. They don't step out of character to comment on the story being silly, they speak to you as a character. So it's got audience participation. Definitely you could liken it to Panto, but I think that's the difference. Okay, and the 80s, how does the 80s work within the show itself? Well, the world of this show, it's, it's not necessarily Victorian England. It's sort of a fantasy version of Victorian England. Um, and within our, our world, they have um, they have technology that they wouldn't have, had, wouldn't have had in the Victorian era. So they might have a really old 80s video camera or a microphone or a Victorian camera uh, mixed with some 80s clothes and some Victorian clothes. So it's sort of a mashup of those different styles. And actually, 80s fashion isn't far off from Victorian anyway with the sort of cinched in waist and the big, and the big <laughs> sleeves. So the, the two styles work really brilliantly together, actually. And then you, you know, you've got a, a Victorian frock coat with some leopard print on it. A bit like Moulin Rouge, the movie oh, Moulin Rouge, okay. where they, they mix those styles together, sort of like that. So we've been to the theatre, what can they expect to see? Well, uh, they can expect to have a lot of fun, certainly. Um, they expect to see uh, spectacle. We, we've got um, some mm. brilliant set pieces, um, some fantastic choreography. Um, mm. Ian has actually choreographed the show himself as well, as well as directing and writing. That's why there are these circles. So, <laughs> um, but no, the choreography is really fantastic and, and it's really <laughs> fun to have just six 
company members doing that choreography because it almost makes it more challenging to put it together but when it's done it right yeah. it is so satisfying and it is so exciting for an audience because yeah. it's kind of like oh well, they're doing a scene and now they're doing choreography and now they're singing it's what can they like, possibly do exactly, next and we, yeah. and we try and top each scene i think if I could, if I could tie it up in a bow and say what you're going to get overall, I'd say that you're just going to have a joyous night out. That, that's the idea: is that you just laugh and and go on a really lovely, magical, funny adventure with these characters, and that you walk out of the theatre at the end with a spring in, in your step and an '80s song in your heart. But oh. no, you know, I think it'll be a really, really joyous, fun evening. Okay, what should people be looking out for? Are there any hidden gems hmm. or any little things you can give away or? Well, we've been trying to be a little <laughs> bit interesting with some of the pieces. As I've said already, we have some interesting styles coming in. But um, with underscore, which is where um, you have music underneath dialogue, um, we have a few of the other tunes within the show kind of at different points. So there's, that's something that you guys can look out for, um, these different pieces mm. that kind of come back here and back there. And sometimes they're themes. disguised in different styles. Oh. Yeah, so you might like a minor key. Or, He's very um, clever. <laughs> <laughs> He's done a very good job. There are a few... There are a few 80s references to song titles or, uh, or to um, 80s culture, a few hidden in there, and there are some... Um, Victorian and Edwardian literary references, really silly ones that, that you wouldn't need to know, but are sort of peppered throughout. So you could look, if you want Easter eggs, as they say, for the oh. DVD bonus. <laughs> and also look out for the newspaper titles, because we've got <laughs> some go. really interesting... <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. I like it. Well, thank you very much for joining me, guys. Mm -hmm. If you want to book your tickets, head over to our website. It's blackpoolgrand.co.uk or call the box office on 01253 290190. I've been Hayley Kay for Blackpool's Grand Theatre. Blackpool's Grand Theatre presents a brand new musical based on Jules Verne's acclaimed novel Around the World in 80s Days. Opening this summer at Blackpool's Grand Theatre, Wednesday the 7th to Saturday the 31st of August. For tickets, call 01253 290 190.